Okay, do it yourself, Bry here. And today we're going to install this Soundstream all in one DVD flip down screen in the headliner of this 2009 four door Mega Cab Dodge Dually Diesel. Okay, at this point, one of the first things I always recommend doing is rolling all four windows down just in case you accidentally hit a lock button and lock you outside of the truck. What we're going to do at this point is hook up a constant power that will feed 12 volts to the video system all the time and then we're going to hook up a switched power that allows the screen to turn on and off with the ignition. These two 12 volt outputs are going to have power that is already fused so is going to be most likely a good location to possibly get the power we need to feed our video system. So our next step is to remove this panel and access the wires that go onto the back of those outputs. And we'll test them with a test probe to determine which is constant or switched power. So basically to remove this panel, you're going to put a screwdriver under here and pry on it just a little bit, being careful not to damage the plastic. Sometimes it's nice to put something around the tip of the screwdriver, um, like um, a cloth or a piece of vinyl or something so you don't gouge the plastic. This one's fairly easy to get the screwdriver under there. And then you're just going to have to go around and pull on the different areas um, to undo the snaps and just kind of carefully feel around where they're at and apply pressure to pull that out like that. Now we have this down and out of the way it's going to allow us to access the wiring uh, back here. Now even though some of these wires may have power on them they could be to power up different accessories um, like this right here is the back of the HVAC control and you don't want to just tap onto any power or wire that may have power on it because it may overload the circuit that that wire is on or it may not always go to have power or it may actually switch to ground. A lot of these wires work off resistances and um, different voltages and if you just tap onto something that you don't really know what it is you can damage the car's electrical system. The nice thing about tapping on the back of these 12 volt outputs is you know exactly what these are. Um, we know that all this is here to do is to apply power to whatever accessory that you plug into this and they have their own fuse. So these are safe places to tap power onto. Another location you can also tap power is on the back of the radio, but you want to be careful you know exactly what you're tapping onto. But you could pull the stereo out here using these screws, pull this out, and you can locate the, the wires you're looking for back there. I prefer on these video systems, if at all possible, to tap onto these because that's they're on their own circuit in the car's electrical system and have their own fuse so if for some reason your video system were to short out or something went wrong with the wiring um, it would just pop the fuse to these and not the rest of the electrical system. Okay so what we have here is just a basic test light. This is not a computer safe test light so you wouldn't want to probe any wire that you're not sure what it is because you can actually damage the computer by putting ground to something that's not supposed to have a direct ground to it. Um, so in some applications it's better to use a power probe or what's called a computer safe test light. In this case it's just a basic test light. And you just put the one end on something that you know is ground. And 
you can see I have the ground on the outside of the power outlet and when I turned the key on the switch power lit this test light up. If you can see that light then I turn it off you can see the power went away. So I know that this red wire here is an accessory power that I could use for my video system. I can also use the ground off of the other side for our ground wire. Okay, so neither power outlet had uh, a constant power, so I had to remove the radio to get our constant source. Uh, this wire here is our constant power that keeps the uh, uh, radio powered up. And then our switched power for our video system, we're going to pull right off of the uh, power outlet. So we're going to take the ground wire off the power outlet, we're going to take the switched wire off the power outlet, and we're going to use the constant wire here to power up our video system. Rather than splice the wire and cut into it, we're going to use a T-tap to tap onto these wires so we don't have to mess with the factory integrity of the electrical system. We can just tap on to these wires. It's important to use the proper size of T-tap for the wire that you're tapping onto. These wires are 18 gauge wires, so I'm using an 18 gauge red T-tap. If you had a bigger wire, like a 16 gauge, you'd want to use a blue. Basically, we just tap onto each one of the wires that we're going to be using. Just wrap the T-tap around the wire like that, close it with your hand, grab a set of pliers, and when you get the snap, squeeze it tight, and that's going to allow us to get the power onto the wire like we need to. Okay, so now to transfer the power up to our video system in the headliner, we're going to need to run a ground wire, a constant wire, and a switched wire. And you can see I've got about 14 feet of 18 gauge wire here and I've put it into the end of this vise. Rather than have them all strung separately, we're going to put them in that vise put the wires into the end of a drill and twist them so that we get a nice clean installation. Okay, you can see here that I've got the wires inserted into this drill and ran along to that vise there. So you pull tight, but not too tight uh, that you don't stretch the wire and damage it. And then you just basically turn the drill on and it's going to kind of pull you towards the vise, that's okay. You can see that it's neatly wrapping those wires nice and tight. Okay, so I have our cable here that we need to run from here behind the dash. We're going to go up this pillar right here and into the headliner and run the power up and over to the headliner where we're going to cut a hole in the headliner right here that's going to allow us to hang this wire right through here. Now there is one additional wire that we are going to hook up to the video system and that one we're going to tap onto right there for the dome lights. So when someone opens up the door it's going to also turn the power to the lights on in the video system that we're going to install in between this joist and that light right there. Okay, so now we've got to determine the location, exact location of where we're going to mount the video system. It looks like this system's going to fit up here pretty nicely, right in between that little bar right there and this light. So what we're going to do
is sandwich this little mounting plate behind the headliner on this piece this, right here. This thing is going to sit about right there. We're going to center in between these two buttons right in the center of that. So the hole for our wires Now I'm cutting a bigger hole in here so I can position things easier once I get that plate up into place. I'm going to use this tool, push over to the side, so we can hook our wire to it and pull it back through. Okay, so now we're going to test the wire, and we're going to have Megan help us open the door. And when she opens the door, if we're on the correct wire, our test light should light up. So what we're doing here is we're connecting to the dome light, so when the door opens, the lights in the video system also will kick on. So we're going to have Megan go ahead and open up the door and see if our test light, yep, our test light lighted up there, and that's the wire we need. Okay, so now we're going to run a wire from the dome light connection over to the hole where we have the rest of our wires and we are going to pull that through. Now, in order to connect this up, a nice little hole to fish this wire through right there that I'm going to use so the wire doesn't get pinched in the headliner. You can use this automatic stripping tool, strip the wire, make sure you twist it good, and then you're going to put one of these that's going to insert into the T-tap inside there. So we're just going to slide that on there like that, and use our nice crimping tool, make sure we've got a good solid connection and then this just pushes right in there like that and that's going to apply the power to our video system for the dome light and then you can just connect this back up and this actually was held in without any screws it basically just snaps into place coming through you want to cut these all to about the same length. Now I can cut all these wires at the same exact time because I don't have them connected up to anything, but if you did, 
you'd possibly short it out. So I can cut those all at the same time because I'm not connected to any power currently. Being as I have this tome light turned off, and the other connections up there are not connected. Use the strip tool. So there's essentially only four wires to this video system. You have your constant. We did our switched in an orange. We did our dome light trigger wire in a red. And we did our ground in a black. So next we're going to grab the actual harness it comes with the video system. You can see it has some fuses on it. And we're going to strip all these wires back. It's important when doing this kind of work that you use the proper connectors, strippers and crimping tools to make the job a lot easier. So I'm first going to hook up our door trigger wire. It says right on the harness that is the door trigger. And I know that I just use this red wire to connect to the door trigger. So I'm going to connect that up using a white cap. White caps are a lot more reliable than butt connectors and they're a lot quicker because you're only making one crimp versus two. So I prefer to use these white caps. Never had any issues with them coming apart. Uh, you twist the wire together like that nice and tight and then apply one crimp and you're done. It's real quick, easy, and reliable. We're gonna do get the, to make this installation cleaner and less likelihood of damaging a wire or pinching a wire. We're gonna wrap these wires nicely with some electrical tape. This way it's kind of like just having basically one cable coming out of your video system instead of having a lot of wires all bunched up or routed incorrectly it's important to just take some tape if you don't have tape you can use wire ties uh, in some applications you might want to use both that's wires to have to mess with So basically you're just going to have to shove these neatly up in there. And I prefer to have a little bit of length like we've done here. Just in case you've got to move things around.
Sonic Ride. Your kids are going to love it. You're going to love it when you're driving camping and you got 100 miles to go. And those kids can just turn on a video like this and you're set. They're not asking, Dad, are we there yet? So with your wireless headphones, your kids can be listening to the video that we're watching here and you can be listening to your music as you're driving. We've got two pair of headphones purchased from tronicsworld.com. These come in a nice case that you can put them uh, behind the seats or underneath the seats. Um, they're fairly durable, so if somebody steps on them, it's not gonna damage the headphones. And um, they're nice sounding. Tronicsworld.com is the company that supplied all the electronics for this installation.